All right, mind-blowing time. Particle physics and quantum field theory can help you understand your deconstruction and religion in general. Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm a deep skeptic, also a pastor. All right, so let's nerd out for just a second about the particle wave duality. So this classic experiment takes uh, photons or electrons and it shoots it at a piece of, you know, uh, metal or whatever that has one single slit in it. When you shoot these, these particles, electrons, photons at that, and you have a thing on the other side that sort of detects where they land, they land exactly as you would guess, like sort of like a, a, a pattern where there's most of them in the center and they sort of get a little bit graduated on the, on either side. And then you do something unexpected and you open a second slit. You shoot the particles at the same thing, but it has two slits in it. And what happens is absolutely fascinating. Instead of having them localized, you actually will see something called a wave interference pattern, where basically it's like if you dropped two rocks in a pond and you watch their waves sort of cross and where the, the high points of one wave and the low points of another wave uh, interact, they cancel each other out. It looks like that. You can Google it. It's a really interesting image. But what that suggests is that photons, all these particles, are both particles and waves. Or to be more accurate, they, they exhibit the attributes of both particles and waves. And that's just not possible when you think about things with sort of this normal classical model of physics. And I'll get to the explanation in just a second. It involves something else called quantum field theory. But part of the problem is tools, right? The tools that they were using to, uh, to sort of analyze particles in this traditional experiment um, were the tools that were meant to measure attributes about the normal physical world, right? To, to measure the, the basic <laughs> physics that had governed everything, this idea of Newtonian physics and all of the, the things that were extrapolated from it. It was those kinds of tools that we'll be using. But then as uh, quantum mechanics and quantum field theory and looking at particles in a whole different way began to develop, there was things like particle accelerators where they take these particles and they ram them into each other to find even smaller things and how those things interact. Let's talk about quantum field theory because basically, what it says is that um, all of these particles exist as part, maybe, I'm not a physicist, but they exist in this quantum field. Like there's an electron field, there's a photon field, and that when we are observing them, it is an excited, localized place in that field, right? There's an excite, there's a bit of the quantum field that is excited, and it is the electron that we look at. But when we are not observing it, those electrons will spread out into that field, and we will see the field really as a sort of broader, um, we're, we're measuring the field and not the excited uh, localized piece. I, again, I am not a physicist. The explanation of that is we're not 100% correct. You can find those physicists on, um, <laughs> on TikTok and probably in the comments here. But let's talk about deconstruction. Because what this says is that two things can be true at the same time. And two things can be true at the same time that seem to completely contradict each other, like something is a particle or something is a wave. Those two things can't be the same. And sometimes we end up with these beliefs that both seem true and both seem to contradict each other. They seem like they are two things that cannot be true at the same time, and then we experience them as true, which leads to these like you know, crises of faith, because a lot of times you were told that you had to have a perfect system of theology and of beliefs, and if things contradicted, that they were wrong, and you were wrong, and you just needed to go with what the pastor told you was the right one. But that just doesn't work in the real world. Because my experience is that a lot of times when we are doing that, when we are having that experience, it is because we do not have the right tools to measure it and fully understand it. We are engaging with a deeper reality than our tools can help us explain and understand. And so that's why I think it's really important for people to be able to say, you know what? I believe these two things and they seem to be completely 
contradictory, but in my life, they seem to be true. And so I'm just going to believe both of the things. And look, religion, like science, is a set of tools to investigate reality. And uh, there are, are multiple, uh, multiple religions, just like there are multiple fields of science, and each of those religions have their own tool to investigate reality. Even within a specific religion, there's often multiple streams, like in Christianity and Judaism, like there's lots of different streams and lots of different tools that are at use. And so what's important about this is to, to realize that like those tools might be being applied in the wrong way to the wrong things. And there are definitely wrong conclusions that are being made because they are investigating a deeper reality, which is why it's very dangerous when you are in a religious space where there are a sort of a range of perspectives on, uh, on a specific issue to say, oh, no, 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 but my perspective is the only one that could possibly be right because what you're doing is you are collapsing, you are making God smaller and the potentials smaller because you're saying you have to pick one. It's like the particle wave duality to just say, no, I'm sorry, I don't care what the data says. It's a particle, right? I'm gonna pick one. But that loses the opportunity for understanding the fullness of it when you get the right tool. So what do you do in this uh, world that has all these different perspectives? Well, you hold on to the beliefs that work for you, the beliefs that help you be the best version of yourself, and the ones that help you be more loving and graceful and inclusive and actually help people in the world around you. That's what you do. And anything that does not serve that, you just let it go. It doesn't seem true or right or doesn't reflect the reality, you, you let it go. But you don't have to be dogmatic about it. You, you don't have to, to say everybody else is completely wrong. You just let it go. And you say, yeah, other people believe differently than me. Now, we, we, we do need to call out hateful things. We do need to call out, don't get me wrong, it's not everything, everything goes. But, uh, but when in, you know, within that range of loving and graceful perspectives on God and on the nature of reality, we can hold them all. We can hold all the ones that we find that are true and let other people hold different ones.